Hey everybody, welcome to Your Beautiful Table, a YouTube channel all about helping you make your tabletops beautiful. Today we're going to talk about this book by James Farmer called A Time to Plant, and I'm going to review a fresh lilac candle from uh, Kringle Candle. Stay tuned. Thanks everybody for coming on back. If you're new to the channel, a couple of things. One, uh, click like, subscribe, we'd love to have you. Our channel is growing and we'd love for you to join in the fun. Today we're gonna talk about this book from James Farmer called A Time to Plant and I'm going to review this fresh lilac candle from Kringle Candle. Um, before we jump into all of that though, consider subscribing to our newsletter. Y'all, I don't spam you, I promise. It's just a way for me to do a newsletter and I send out um, I do drawings every once in a while, so if you want to be entered into a free drawing for candle stuff, consider subscribing to the newsletter. That way I can email you to tell you that you've won. Um, so your beautiful table is all about uh, tabletops, and part of that involves cut flowers, flower arranging, those kinds of things. And I also really like to do gardening and spend time outdoors. Well, I am totally a fan of James Farmer, and so you all can Google him, and I'll put a link to his website below. Uh, a lot of fun to follow him on Instagram and um, on social media and uh, to track him down through his book. So he has several books out there and this one I think is his first book that came out in 2011 called A Time to Plant. It's a beautiful book, looks great on your tabletop, um, but more than that it is a great resource. And the reason why I'm talking about this today is that one of you, one of our viewers, put in a comment in a previous video that said, hey John, how about giving some guidance on pruning lilacs? And I was like, huh, let me talk about that a little bit. And here's the thing, friends. And I'm going to put the book down for a second. I grew up in the South. I live in the South. Lilacs are traditionally have not been grown in the South because lilacs need a long, cold winter in order for their blooms to form and to be successful plants. And so because our winters are often mild and short, thankfully, because I'm, I like the warm weather, but because our winters in the south are mild and short, we generally don't have success growing lilac bushes. And with climate change, um, it's continuing to get warmer. And so we just haven't traditionally had success with lilacs in the south. That being said, um, in uh, upper elevation, so in the mountain regions of uh, southern states, as we, you move up um, more north in terms of, I can't remember whether it's latitude or longitude, but anyway, when you go up more north, you will see in the rolling hills of Virginia, so the um, mountains of Virginia, in the mountains of North Carolina, Georgia, you will see some traditional lilac bushes in gardens there. I was in Middleburg, Virginia a couple of weeks ago, and there was a lilac bush that was coming into full bloom then. But the question from the viewer, and thanks for your question, uh, was what about pruning lilacs? And I did a little bit of research and they say to prune the lilacs immediately after blooming, which makes a lot of sense because the lilacs bloom, the blooms are there, they smell gorgeous, they look beautiful. Go ahead and snip them off and enjoy them, arrange them in your home. That will be a, a, a time to prune them. Now there are some specific advice, there is some specific advice about how to reshape, rejuvenate <clears throat> your lilac bushes. And so I direct you to some of those resources easy to find on the internet. If you have a lilac bush that is old and has stopped blooming or doesn't look great, so I'll refer you to that because it's not my area of expertise, but it did prompt me to think about, y'all, um, I'm getting distracted because I, my dogs, Buddy and Sammy are in here and Buddy is snoring so loudly. So if you hear snoring, I'll click you know, when I edit the video, I'll click reduce background noise, but he is sawing logs just out of camera shot. Maybe I'll get a picture of him in just a minute. But anyhow, um, the question about lilacs reminded me about this book, A Time to Plant, from James Farmer, because he has some really good advice on the seasons and how to um, garden according to the season. So let me turn to a book or to a page in the book that it really this really reminded me of, and you'll you'll see why. Da, da, da. He has a page called "A Time to Prune," and so in this page he talks about the May Rule, and he and he says if you learn nothing else about pruning, remember the May Rule. The rule applies to the Deep South as well as to broad sections of the country. If the shrub, if the shrub blooms before May, then 
prune it immediately after the shrub has bloomed or while it's blooming to bring the blossoms inside for arrangements and enjoyment. This rule bodes well for azaleas, spring blooming spireas, forsythia, camellias, sasanquas, quince, that's uh, camellias, uh, red bud, Japanese magnolia, tea olive, winter daphne, English dogwood, and other blooms before May shrubs. So if the shrub blooms after May, plume, plume, prune the plant during dormancy or in wintertime. This goes well for hydrangeas, except oak leaf hydrangeas, crepe myrtles, vitex, roses, uh, alethea, grapes, um, pyracantha, um, some types of roses, and liriope, those kinds of things. So the May rule, if it blooms before May, then prune it immediately after. And it, if it blooms after May, bloom prune the plant during its dormancy. So that's one of the things about evergreen shrubs. You know, we can bring them in during the Christmas wintertime season, and that's because it's a great time to prune. So, you know, save your pruning for your evergreen shrubs until the cold winter months. Prune them, use them for arrangements indoors. Prune those flowering shrubs that bloom before May uh, as soon as they bloom. I've got some azaleas that are still hanging on to um, blooms. I'm going to trim them up in a little bit, but you want to do it quickly because the next year's blooms will set on um, the plant uh, relatively soon in some cases. So the pruning question about lilacs reminded me about this book. So it retails or the book is listed for $40, but I was able to find it on Amazon and I'll put the link below for about $23. Of course, check out your local bookstore. They can order it for you and you can support the fabric of your local economy and your local bookseller. It comes with this really beautiful dust jacket. It's got an arrangement featuring pansies and some heuchera on the backside. So uh, a, a beautiful uh, cover on the back. Um, so let's see. Um, about 190 pages or so, and this book is more what I would call like a lifestyle manual, less of a reference book. So when you open it up, you'll see different sections that are really just based around what I perceive to be James's, James's, James, you, I guess you could apostrophe or put it both, but James' philosophy around gardening. And so it's a, it's got lots of beautiful full color pictures. You can see uh, pictures of James and cute self in there. Um, uh, let's see, looks like he's making some iced tea. Oh yeah, there's his recipe for tea that includes mint. And then lots of ideas about container gardening, perennial gardening, those kinds of things. And then he moves into uh, living in the garden, really. Um, good ideas about color combinations. You know, I go to the uh, garden center, I'm just like, flummox sometimes about the, the color combination. So he's got some good color recipes and suggestions for plants that make good color recipes. Um, and then he moves into different seasons and provides recipes. So this one is peaches and blackberries, a great recipe for summer. He moves into fall, carrot cake recipe, talking about table decor, sweet potato souffle recipes. Here you go back to coleus and some, looks like some, um, Power, not maybe pyracantha or nandina berries in this uh, close-up of the uh, flower arrangement. Um, some really great, let me bring this up, detail of some fall arrangements that are outside for fall festival combined with some kebab recipes grilling out in the cool days of fall. There was a couple of other pictures that I wanted to show. So tabletop decor, different ideas, oyster roast, um, just really an overall great book for getting ideas about how to bring the outdoors inside and how to take entertaining or the outdoors inside and how to bring entertaining outside to the garden. So mixing it up, living um, three seasons outdoors. So I've enjoyed reading A Time to Plant. It helps me remember some really uh, great basic tips and tricks and also provides some inspiration uh, throughout the year when I'm, when I'm um, thinking about new ideas for the garden. So he talks about planning in the fall for a good spring and planning in the spring for and the summer for a great fall. So it helps you think through, okay, what's this garden going to look like through the whole year? So if you're looking for a great gift, hostess gift, um, someone who loves to be outside in the garden, a time to plant is both um, uh, a guide to help you have really successful um, gardens and and also tabletop decor. So check this one out. So when 
our viewer mentioned lilac. It reminded me that I have lilac um, candles in my candle collection, and I have purchased these in the past. So this is the Kringle Fresh Lilac Candle. It is fourteen and a half ounces, and it is a two wick candle. So I um, did some reviews of this candle, calling them Bath and Body Works killers, um, because I really feel that this candle and the two wick. Um, really competes with those three wick candles from Bath and Body Works in terms of price point um, and the overall experience that I get in terms of fragrance, fragrance throw and intensity. These are on point. One of the things I really like about these Kringle candles though is that they retain their fragrance all the way through and don't become scorched or burnt. And so I've really enjoyed that about um, these two wick candles. A note though, I can no longer find these two wick candles and so I think Kringle has stopped making them. They have replaced them, same fragrance with a same fragrance profile with a two with a three wick soy based candle. A little bit pricier. The price point on those is about $18. And these I found ah uh, $15 or less at my local grocery store. So you can still find in some places Kringle candle and different retailers. Um, but check them out online. Uh, I really enjoyed this two wick um, candle concept because I feel like the wax doesn't melt so quickly and it creates a more pleasant um, burning environment really. So the candle doesn't overheat, it doesn't become too bright, it doesn't throw out too much scent all at one time and so I've really enjoyed uh, the two wicks. So I'll have to try the three wicks once I burn through these. Um, so this candle, it is in a, you know, glass canister here. It's got a very nice label on the front. It's got a beautiful picture of the lilac and it's got this nice metallic border around the label. Really well done. High resolution uh, photograph there. And the top is a tempered or tempered, um, I think we call that, um, mallet, sort of mallet. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to think about it, but um, anyway, it's got a textured design that helps resist um, fingerprints on there. Uh, and I like that because the solid chrome, it just gets so fingerprinty. If you open it up, a nice white wax there, you see the two wicks are well centered and these are, um, you know, lead free, 100% uh, cotton wicks. This is not a soy, being, this is not a soy candle. This is a, a regular paraffin uh, candle. It's got a, a gasket there in the lid, just like a Bath & Body Works candle that you can help seal it up and keep it fresh if you want to uh, close it up. So when I open this candle, wow, it is a nice, fresh, white floral scent, um, and it smells like spring to me, but a little bit in the perfume white floral range. It's got a nice fragrance bubble, so you can just plop this right on an end table, bedside table, and enjoy the fragrance without even having to light the candle, which is a, a delight. Um, these candles have, um, of course, you know, anytime you have combustion, you're going to have a little bit of, um, um, you know, just candle litter in the wax and a, a little bit of discoloration. These, though, perform really well. I've had some other candles that I've burned from other manufacturers where the wax turns an icky color. Thankfully, this one does discolor because it's burning and melting, but it doesn't go yellow or yucky or bleh. So it's nice that you can see the candle as it burns down and you get all the light and it doesn't become too terribly discolored. The smoke and soot on these candles, in my experience, is very well contained. I haven't had a lot of uh, soot or smoke on the sides of the candle. Um, I've burned these in the past, um, so you can like click around and find uh, different reviews of these, but um, this is a, a, a candle that I've burned. Um, and I also like the lemon rosemary candle from Kringle. It is a top uh, lemon favorite for me. Um, so this has, you know, um, good long burn time. Hold, please let me find the burn time. So the burn time is on this candle is up to 45 hours, so it is in line with what you get in a Bath & Body Works uh, three wick. With this one in particular in two wicks and not the current three wick model, you probably will get a additional burn time out of it. So the dollar per burn time ratio on these is really economical, so it becomes one uh, that you can feel confident in burning and using in your own home. It's also one that I have used as a gift. So this is a great host or hostess gift now that we're getting back into having uh, dinner parties and visiting others in their homes. So consider this one, uh, the fresh lilac candle from Kringle. 
it's a really great choice. Hey everybody, thank you for joining and watching me ramble all about A Time to Plant from James Farmer and this Kringle Candle. Hopefully these two things will help get you some ideas about how to bring the springtime indoors and we'll see you next time.